Well, the Yusita and Vegas Pro is a very competent NLE that is more capable than most will tell you. Its plug-and-play ideal gives it a very low bar of entry for people who want to learn how to do video editing but still want professional tools. While Premiere Pro and Final Cut are industry standards on Mac and Windows, they're all alternatives that do much of the same stuff, in some ways a lot better. I've actually been using Vegas Pro for many years, and while people tell me it's awful, I beg to differ. Vegas Pro is full of a ton of features that put it a bar above its competition, from its simple workflow to its astoundingly fast final render engine. It's a lot better than what people make it seem out to be. But for you Twitch streamers out there, it's also a very competent motion graphics editor. With its large library of video transitions, it does make it kind of an ideal for making OBS and stream transitions without having to shell out money for After Effects. So today, let's make a transition in Vegas Pro and see how it works in OBS. Let's get into it. Alright, I'm in Vegas Pro, and before we get beginning any making any animations, I want to get you familiar with the panels in Vegas Pro. You have several to go through. You have your project media, transition video effects, and generators um, here in this particular panel. You got a lot of them. Uh, transitions, you have many, many, many transitions. Um, Vegas Pro is very, like I said, very plug and play, where it helps you out a lot by keeping things a little bit more simple and. Um, I guess standard, I mean linear, I mean it's just it's like the amount of um, transitions it gives you means that making transitions yourself is not necess necessarily uh, required and I like that. Uh, in terms of video effects, I have a lot more than standard Vegas Pro will have because I have the Ignite 360 plugin installed as well as Ignite at, uh, the regular Ignite plugin. Uh, if you're actually looking for a, a plugin for a mini effect, Ignite 360 is fantastic. Um, but otherwise, Vegas Pro gives you a pretty good amount of basic trans uh, effects that do various things. Nothing to say there, but we're not going to use effects, uh, view effects for this particular animation. Your media generator, which also includes stuff from Ignite, um, we're not going to focus on that either. And project notes for making notes. You have your uh, video preview and trimmer here. Uh, to open up a view and trimmer, you just right click and it says open and trimmer. Simple as that. Um, we're not going to focus on it though. You have your uh, mixing console, which can be expanded with that button, and your timeline. Simple as that, but we're not going to go into too much detail about it right here. So for first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add our D-pad and add our background. So before we start um, adding the actual transition itself, um, we are going to animate the logo. Now there are two primary ways to animate logo, uh, anything in Vegas Pro. You have your crop. Uh, your crop a video a view of event effects or crop and pan um, which will basically do much things the other option we're going to be going into in a second um, now Vegas Pro does do things a lot better in uh, when it comes to this kind of thing than I think any other video editor does is that they give you a, a diagram now what this box what this box represents the outer boundaries of the box mean that everything outside of it is out off screen Everything within it is on screen. And this this uh, circle just means rotation, nothing more. Um, so this actually makes it a lot easier to identify what's gonna be off screen and what's gonna be on screen when it comes to pan and crop. Um, you could you could move it around, you can do various things with it. And, and keyframes will be down here on this timeline over here. Very simple. So that is the first way you can uh, animate animations, but it's not the preferred way. What I would prefer to do is use track motion. Track motion is even better. Sim uh, is very similar to crop and pan, but the diagram does not show specifically where the anime where the image is going to be on, on screen. And instead, it just shows the particular uh, asset or element and where it's going to be on screen. So there are a few buttons you should be familiar with when it comes to Vegas Pro's uh, track motion editor. There's pretty more specifically these se seven buttons up here. Well, not really seven, it's more like six, but you get the idea. Um, so these two right here, these are two buttons I use all the time. Uh, these buttons are prevent movement on X and Y axis. So if you want to move the, an move the image in a specific direction, um, but you don't want to move it and it, have it move it in the other, meaning you don't want free movement on this axis, you activate one of these buttons. So I'm going to prevent movement on the x-axis, meaning I can only move it up and down. Same thing for the other one, but for the y-axis, I can only move it left and right. Uh, these other buttons are also important. Uh, lock aspect ratio and scale by the center. If you lock the aspect ratio, 
uh, you can freely transform the image to your heart's content. I usually keep that on because it keeps me consistent. Scale about center is so somewhat the same thing. However, if you turn it off, it only scales uh, based on the anchor points, which is the corners of the box. I keep that on. This prevent scaling X and Y is the same thing as prevent movement, except that you can only scale in a specific direction. I keep those off. Your next buttons down here are, is the keyframe timeline. Um, you also you could also edit uh, uh, traits over here in on this particular part, but it is way easier to use the box. Like you could use these uh, options right here if you want precision, but most of the time, if you just want to animate something, the box works 99% of the time. Uh, when it comes to keyframing, we're going to start keyframing here and simple. So if you're not familiar with a keyframe is, and I think I explained this in my Calvary video, but, Calvary video, but I'll explain it here again. In simple terms, a keyframe is basically just what tells a computer where an animation begins and where an animation starts in reverse order. And Whatever, what the computer is going to do is that it's going to, to take the keyframe at the uh, keyframes at the beginning and the end of the animation and fill in the space between. Um, and this is the same thing for any video editor, uh, video editor or motion graphics editor that uses keyframes. It is no different. And how we're going to do this is we're going to start here at the beginning. We're going to make sure that our Y axis are is prevented movement. We're going to scoot this guy off to the left. Not to the right, to the left. If you if you you could technically do this to the right. However, people tend to look left to right, and if you want this animation to look, I mean, at least coherent, and people will actually like to watch as it goes along, you want them to move left to right, like reading a book. Simple as that. And then we're gonna we're actually gonna move this. Once we have that move to the left, we're gonna move the timeline a few seconds, specifically ten milliseconds. We're gonna scoot this guy forward until it's about almost halfway towards the center add another keyframe but further apart about a second uh, about 20 milliseconds further apart we're going to move this guy over here this way a little bit and then move the, the uh, timeline again a little bit further but shorter time and move it off screen if we play it back it looks pretty good although i'm going to I'm going to shorten the time up a little bit. That. Now, what we could also do to make it look a little bit better is that we could also change the interpolation. So if you right click on a time uh, on a keyframe, you have these options at the bottom: linear, fast, slow, smooth, sharp, and whole. Um, the, all these are what these are. What these are is keyframe interpolation, and what that means is that when you change the options here, it changes how the engine or keyframing engine times the event. So if you have it to smooth, which we're going to set them all to, set them all to smooth, and we play it back, did you notice it there? Watch it again. One more time, or with the uh, window closed. You probably noticed that at, at one point in the animation, it slowed down. And then once it got to the next keyframe, it kind of sped up with vigor. Now that that is how the keyframe interpolation tends to work. It's it's smooth, it smoothly transitions from one keyframe to the next. This is what we want. So now that we have this all sorted out, we're going to shorten up our timeline here. Shorten up a little bit more, just so we have things a little more precise. And then we're going to add a pre-made transition. What we're going to use specifically is the linear white. And more, even more specifically, we're going to do the top left diagonal soft edge. We're going to put it on our backtrack. I mean, not really a real backtrack, but we're going to put it on there. So the linear wipe, we're going to shorten up until it's just one frame behind the second keyframe in our animation. We're going to add another keyframe, or another transition rather, and make it just, just uh, more to the center. Uh, the second part and this actually sorted up by accident so we play it back smooth i like it now if i play this back over and over again it's not the smoothest looking thing in the world because it's actually running at 30 fps instead of uh 60. um but if you export in 60 frames a second it will look a lot better um but this is just a basic 
transition that you can make in Vegas Pro in five minutes, or in my case, 11. Um, but this was all a bunch of explaining in the middle, so it's probably more like seven minutes in, in general. It's something you can use. However, if you want to export to this particular an animation, you have options. Now, in previous versions of Vegas Pro, this was a lot easier. However, nowadays, it's different. Uh, Vegas Pro, does no in order to export an alpha channel, which you're going to want to do when exporting this, so it so appears above your um, your video scene, you need the alpha channel. Now, alpha channel is just is a third color space in RGB. So you have red, green, and blue, but you have alpha. Alpha does not represent color, but instead represents transparency. Um, and not all video codecs will support it. Now, you could you could encode an entire video source in a code that does not support alpha, and it'll still be in there. But if you want to you if you want to be more complex with it and more uh, more, well, really more complex with it you want to export the alpha channel with it so that it so things on top appear below with no black screen behind it quicktime and because video biggest pro is a windows only piece of software quicktime and it's or apple supported support uh, and it's support for quicktime at version 7 it was many years ago it's an old version it includes old um, and outdated codecs it doesn't even include prores that's how old it is so in those versions, you would take you would take the QuickTime 7 codec and install it. It would appear in the uh, options for formats. I have it installed in the system. It is no longer there. So instead, we're going to have to use a more complicated and admittedly more resource heavy on your on your hard drive format for Windows. So we're going to start with video for Windows. We're going to go to HD 1080p 25. Nope, didn't do that. We're going to customize the template. Under video, we're going to set it to uncompressed. Keep that in mind. Render alpha channel. Okay, so I end up having to re export in the uncompressed format in any way because apparently it couldn't find the Cineform code, like even though there wasn't options for it. Things are broken, I know. But now we have it exported. You're done. And if we go into the thing and uh, view it, and if you play it back, it is a little slow, admittedly, um, because it is in a uncompressed format. But it looks a lot better than it did before when it's running at 60 frames a second. Simple as that. But yeah, that was an animation. I know it's very simple. I know it's not the most complicated thing. It's not the best thing in the world. But you're just learning how to make this, use the software. You really can't go wrong with this kind of thing. I mean, you, you can still build up things better like Vegas Effects and After Effects and Calvary and stuff like that. But if you're just learning for something that's simple and makes things a little bit more streamlined, Vegas Pro is a good software for that kind of thing. I know the kind of exporting thing is really wonky nowadays because uh, with, with the lack of support for QuickTime on Windows because Apple is selfish and they don't want you to have it, it makes things more complicated, but that's the way we have to deal with things with. But yeah, uh, I thank you for joining me for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big like and also subscribe. I've been trying to force myself to say that kind of thing. It's just a bit weird. I know, I hate saying it, but I have to. Thank you for joining me in this video, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next one.